Welcome back everybody for lecture four, part two, where we, we are finally gonna get into multiple unit operations. Now, for this, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start with a multiple unit process and then we're gonna walk through how we would approach solving this type of a problem. So what I have on this slide is a example of a multi multiple unit process where you see that we're gonna take one of our single units and now we can tack on one or more additional unit operations that have some of our streams connected. Now, as you may see, we've got uh, a few different streams going on and I didn't number the streams just yet, just because we need to clean this process up, just uh, we need to clean the process up before we can move forward and try and solve this. Now, do you know why I need to clean this up or how I can clean this up? Okay. And the reason that you need to clean this up is that we've got something called a mixing point where you see that I've got this stream that's entering in this intermediate stream that's connecting our two unit processes. So we need to convert that so that we can figure out how much material is actually going to be entering that second unit operation. So we're going to make this into a mixing point. And now that we've made this into a mixing point, we can begin to approach solving this unit pro uh, this problem. And when setting up material balances for the system, there's something that we're going to be, well, there's a couple of things we're going to be doing. So when we set, when we set this up, we're going to draw envelopes around each piece of equipment and an envelope around our total process. Because as you remember, we, in our, our in all of our systems, there's always an opportunity to make a total material balance. And that's a really convenient and handy material balance to be using. And so in this type of situation, we still want to be able to do that total material balance. And for our envelopes, the whole reason we're doing that is because we can write material balances for the streams for each envelope. And then we can also size up based on the different envelopes we have, which one probably is going to be the simplest one, one for us to solve. And whichever one has the fewest unknowns, that's probably the one we're going to want to start with. So what I wanted to do is just give you an example of what do I mean by drawing an envelope? And for that, all I'm doing is I'm just drawing a box around my unit process so that I can identify all the streams that are coming in and out of that, that envelope. And so I've labeled that first envelope A. My next envelope I'll do around the mixing point, that's envelope B, and then envelope C. And I didn't include any of the information for the streams just because I didn't want to clutter this diagram. And so you see, I've got an envelope around each of my unit processes. So I can now explore the material balances for each unit. And I can also draw a total material, a total envelope, which would surround the entire system. And in that case, all we're going to focus on is the streams that are entering or exiting the entire system. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus that we'll start with envelope A and then we'll work for, we'll move forward for solving the rest of our unit operation. So for envelope A, we, we're going to focus on streams one, two, and three. And we're going to use all that information I had on one, two, and three. And if we perform a degree of freedom analysis on this unit, we'll see that we have, we've got six ISVs because I have A and B in all three of my streams. We, we know four pieces of information, which are our two mass flow rates for streams one and two, and we know a mass fraction for stream one and two. And in this case, I can perform two independent material balances, one for component A and one for component B. And that gives me zero degrees of freedom. So I, I know I can solve this, this system and we can work on that. So if we do a total material balance and one equals M2 plus M3, we can then solve for M3 and we'll get that it's 60, uh, it's, a, it's 60 kilograms per hour. We can then do a species material balance. So we can do material balance for component A. And again, we're gonna do the same thing where we do M1, M1 dot A equals M2 dot A plus M3 dot A. Now we can substitute in all the information we have and solve for X3A. And in that case, X3A is going to be 0.233. So I now have all the information for the system and I can move forward and use that information for stream three to solve for envelope for our, our following envelope, envelope B. So in this case, 
I've got information for streams three and four. And again, if we do a degree of freedom analysis on this envelope, what we'll see is that we have six ISVs because again, we're going to have components A and B in streams three, four, and five. I have four knowns, right? I know two pieces of information for stream three, and I've got two pieces of information for stream four. And we can do two material balances again, one for component A, one for component B. We can also do a total material balance, but again, it's two independent material balances. And thus we have zero degrees of freedom. So we can again, just go through that whole procedure for solving for the unknown pieces, which is everything about stream five. So we'll again do a total material balance, m3 dot plus m4 dot equals m5 dot. We know that m5 dot is then gonna be 90, because I'm summing up 60 plus 30. And we can then do a, a material balance for species A with m3 dot A plus m4 dot A equals m5 dot A. Substitute in all the known values we have to solve for x5a, which in this case would be 0.256. And now with all that information, we can move on to envelope C and solve for stream seven. And again, we're gonna perform a degree of freedom analysis just to make sure we can solve this. So again, we're gonna have six ISVs because I have two components in streams five, six, and seven. I have, again, four known pieces of information, two from stream five, two for, from stream six. I can perform two independent material balances and I have zero degrees of freedom. And again, we're gonna go through our total material balance, m5 dot equals m6 dot plus m7 dot. I figure out that m7 dot is equal to 60 kilograms per hour. I can then do a component material balance. I'm gonna do it again for A and m5 dot A plus m6 dot A equals m7 dot A. And in that case, again, I'm gonna substitute in all my known values. And we will see that x7 dot A or x7A is equal to 0 0.083. Now, as you see, we went through all these envelopes and it won't necessarily be the case that you're gonna start with the leftmost envelope and work your way all the way to the rightmost envelope. You may see that the rightmost envelope has the most information and then you'll have to work your way backwards or you may have to start in the middle and then work your way left and right. It, it really depends on all the information that you're given. Now, I also mentioned that you can do a total material balance on your system. And I just wanted to highlight really quickly, what does that look like? So if we return to our, our regular diagram with all of our unit processes, as you, as you remember, we can draw a total material balance that surrounds all of our units. And just to give you a, an additional visual, you see that the only streams that you're gonna focus on are the streams entering and exiting that total material balance envelope. So you see that we're only focusing on streams one and four because those are the ones that are entering and streams two, six, and seven for the ones that are exiting because that's exiting the entire system. It's not entering any individual component. You see all those unit processes get eliminated when you do a total envelope, which again can be handy at times. So don't forget, that that total material balance envelope is also available to you. And now, uh, now to recap, we talked about adding a mixing point. We, we went through making envelopes and how to approach solving a multi-unit process. And now for our next part of class, what we're gonna do is a couple of, we're gonna do an example problem for a multiple unit process. And now you'll get some practice on drawing envelopes. So stay tuned. And I'll see you soon.